All right, let's go ahead and do this format together. Which of the following cannot be assumed? You see these problems on your test every now and then, and you want to make sure that you pay attention to those nots and that you don't just pick the first thing that's true and then move on to the next problem and not um, and not pay attention to the not. Okay, so we want to know which of the following cannot be assumed. We know that on Friday, we took our angles and we categorized them. We categorized them only on the foundation that we had parallel lines cut by a transversal. So remember, these categories, throw them out the window. They do not work if we do not have parallel lines cut by a transversal. So we categorize them, and they look a little something like this, this, and this. And then those other ones down there, those were our old ones. We already know which column they go in. So we realize, hey, if it started with an S, same side, the exterior, same side, interior, supplementary. If it starts with an S, they're supplementary. And if it didn't start with an S, they're congruent. So with that knowledge, we can go back to our warm-up, and we can look at our choices. Angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. Well, first of all, one thing I notice is that 2 and 3 do not have a vocab word. There is no vocab word for 2 and 3. They are nothing to each other. So what I do know is that 2 is corresponding with 4. 2 and 4 can be subbed equally for each other. They are the same angle. 4 and 3 are a linear pair. 4 and 3 are supplementary. So already A is raising a really red flag. 2 is not supposed to be congruent to 3. So they teach all like put an M by it. Like maybe I really think this is my answer, but let me go check all the other ones. Yeah? Okay, what about B? Angle 1 and angle 6 are supplementary. B is another one where those two angles are not a vocab word. There's no word that can relate those two angles. But I could sub 1 in for 5 because they're corresponding. How is 5 related to 6? 5 and 6 are linear pair. 5 and 6 are supplementary. That means 1 and 6 are supplementary. So we know that this is a true statement. You are so true. All right. One and five. Vocab word, those are corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are congruent. They're doing what they're supposed to. Totally true. All right. Four and three. Can you assume that four and three are supplementary? Can you assume that? Sure you can. Those are good old linear pair. That's the linear pair theorem. Which says if two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. So it ended up being A, just like we thought. We cannot assume 2 is congruent to 3. Could 2 be congruent to 3? Could they? What would their measures need to be for them to be congruent? 2 and 3. There you go. If they were 90 degree angles, then they would be supplementary and congruent at the same time. But we can't assume that, so we're not going to. All right. Okay, just a reminder that you have all of these theorems on um, that paper, I think, that says notes for proof. So we did not spend class time going through all of these theorems and writing them in our notes because they're already there for you on that paper. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to take these theorems and we're going to learn about the converse of these theorems. Do you all remember what converse means? Converse. Reverse, converse, reverse, very good. So we're going to switch the hypothesis and the conclusion. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then same side interior angles are supplementary. The converse would be if same side interior angles are supplementary, then we have parallel lines. So we're taking what we learned on Friday and we are reversing it. We're not going to start with parallel lines. We're going to start with our angle pairs and whether they're congruent or supplementary. So consider a problem like this. We've got a pipeline intersecting two lanes of a highway. Hopefully it's like right buried underneath those two lanes. What would the value of x need to be to ensure that the two lanes are parallel? So what we're saying here is that on Friday, on your last lesson, everything was parallel. 
everything was already ready to go parallel and you just had to solve for x. Now in today's lesson we're going to ask ourselves, we don't know if these are parallel. We need to show and determine and prove that they're parallel and we need to use our theorems to help us do that. So that's what we're doing today. So, to, so today we are not going to know if our lines are parallel. The jury's going to be out. It'll be our job to use what we learn to prove if they're parallel or not. So the big question today is going to be, is A parallel to B? Or whatever our lines might be called. So today it's not, hey, solve for X. Hey, name the vocab word. Today the final answer is going to be yes or no. Is A parallel to B or no, is it not? All right, take a look at these pictures. We've got the green and the gold for Cyphol. Sorry. Um, I want to know if K is parallel to M. And I want you to use the evidence that you're given. I want you to use the angle measures, and don't say it yet, to determine which picture K is parallel to M. Is it the green or the gold? Don't say it. All right, you're right. In the green picture, K is not parallel to M. That's what that symbol means, not parallel. You take parallel and you blast it out. And in the gold picture, K is parallel to M. And let's talk about why. What's the vocab word for the type of angles you were given? The vocab word. Same side interior angles. Very good. Well, we know our theorem says if same side interior angles are supplementary, then K is parallel to M. So it's kind of like our angles need to obey these certain rules. And if they're obeying their rules, they're obeying, the answer is yes. And if they're disobeying, then the answer is no. So if we look at this, 65 plus 98, you know what? I don't even care what it adds up to as long as I know whether it equals 180 or not. Does it equal 180? No. I don't even care what the sum is. If it doesn't equal 180, those angles are not behaving, and so K is not parallel to them. Then you look at these over here, 75 plus 105, oh, ding, ding, ding. Yes, it equals 180, so our answer is yes. So the, today is all about whether the angles are behaving or not. Okay, let's look at this next example. Determine if A is parallel to B and justify your answer. So we're going to go problem by problem, and we're going to decide if the angles are behaving and whether we say yes or no. Because right now I don't know if A is parallel to B. I'm not allowed to assume that. And I don't see arrows on my picture. Okay, let's look at number one. If we knew that 2 was congruent to 6, this is kind of in the one, not really, would A be parallel to B? So here's how you go through this. First, you state the vocab word. What's the vocab word for 2 and 6? alternate interior angle. Well, the converse of the alternate interior angle theorem is if alternate interior angles are congruent, then our lines are parallel. So they're following the rule. They're doing what they're supposed to. Alternate interior angles are supposed to be congruent. They're telling us they are congruent, so the answer to that first one is yes. Next one. 3 is congruent to 4. Yes or no? From B and E. First of all, 3 and 4 are a linear pair, right? Linear pairs, they're not even supposed to be congruent most of the time, unless they're 90 degrees. So, the answer is definitely no. But I want to pose this question to you. Even if those were doing what they're supposed to, even if the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4 equals 180. Would our answer still be no? Because you have to remember what we're doing here. Yes, a linear pair, they're supposed to be supplementary. I agree. But what we're trying to decide is if A is parallel to B. Would a linear pair, would a linear pair help us prove parallel lines? Would a linear pair help us prove parallel lines? And the answer is no. Good job. The reason is because A, line A, is not involved. You see how I could erase A from my picture and I would still have a linear pair. So the thing is, 3 and 4 being a linear pair, 
does not tell A to do anything. It doesn't force A to do anything. Have you ever said that? You're not my mom. You can't make me do that. 3 and 4 don't make line A do anything at all. So that's why it would be no either way. Let's go more quickly now that we know what we're doing. 7 and 3. 7 and 3. Those are alternate interior angles. Are they obeying? Are they doing what they're supposed to? No, right? It's saying they're supplementary, but alternate interior is supposed to be congruent. So that one is a no. Last one. 1 and 5. 1 and 5 are another pair. Well, we haven't had one like this, sorry, of alternate exterior angles. They're supposed to be congruent. They're doing what they're supposed to do. So the answer is yes. Okay, we're going to skip the next few examples because that's going to be a warm-up another day. Let's try these. This question's a little different. This one says, which two lines must be parallel? Which two lines? So this one is not a yes or no question. It's a, hey, name the lines that are parallel. Um, angle 13 and angle 15. Vocab words. What's the vocab word? Corresponding angles. We know the converse of our theorem is if corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. But we need to know which lines are parallel. Which lines are involved in making angles 13 and 15? Good. A and B. So what I tell my students sometimes is sometimes cover up the line that's not involved. And the parallel lines will be obvious once you cover it up. A is parallel to B. That's the answer. So when you don't know which one, cover up the line that's not involved. 7 is congruent to 4. What do you think? What's your answer? So read. Sorry. A could be erased from this picture, and 4 and 7 would still be there. B could be erased from this picture. And 4 and 7 would still be there. With those angles gone, I don't have any parallel lines. I have none. None. So it says which two lines must be parallel, and the answer to number 9 is none. Next one. Angle 3 and angle 4 equal 180. That's a none as well, because those are linear pairs. Linear pairs don't force anybody to be parallel. Last one. 5 and 9. Those are... Same side interior angles. They're supposed to be supplementary, and they are supplementary. So which lines get to be parallel for them doing what they're supposed to be doing? You see it? C and D. C is parallel to D. We have two more examples, if y'all can hang in there. We have two more examples. All right, you're going to see this one on your homework again, so don't worry about copying all of this into your notes. Let's just look at it together. Determine if A, C is parallel to DF. So this is another yes or no question. But now it's not as simple as just two lines and one transversal. There's more going on. Let's label our picture. EDF is 28 degrees. EDA is 100 degrees. And CAD is 53 degrees. Where do we start? What do we do first? Add them all up. Yep, we should add them all up. What's the vocab word for this angle and the sum of these two angles? What's the vocab word for those two? Same side interior. Very good. If same side interior angles are supplementary, then we have parallel lines. So add them up, are they? What do you get? What do you get when you add them? 181. Right? It equals 181. So they are one degree away from being parallel, but the answer is no. One degree away. I know. I know. Here's the hardest problem I can give you. 
name the lines that are parallel. Students get this one wrong a lot, a lot, a lot. So, your choices are AB is parallel to CD. Your other choice is AC is parallel to B. Think about it for a minute. My biggest piece of advice to you on this problem is to only look at one transversal at a time. You cannot look at all four angles at once because you can't use any theorem on all four angles. So what we're going to do is look at, let's grab two lines and one transversal. If the angles are doing what they're supposed to, then we have parallel lines. And if they're not doing what they're supposed to, then we don't have parallel lines. So, look we'll at these two angles, 96 and 84. Those are same side interior angles. They're supposed to be supplementary. Are they supplementary? Yes, they are. So, those angles are doing what they're supposed to. Therefore, the first one I tried was correct. A, C is parallel to BD. Now, let's look at if you would have tried the other two angles, the other two lines. A lot of people think that this is the right answer. Remember, only look at one transversal at a time. When I look at A, B, and C, D, and I'm trying to decide if those are parallel, I need to look at same side interior angles again. Same side interior angle. 84 and 85 are those supplementary. And you add them up and you're like, no, those are not supplementary. That means AD is not parallel to CD. So look at two lines with one transversal at 